Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as light. Behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with him. And Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it, it's good that we're here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise, and do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In today's uh, first reading, God tells Abraham to leave his homeland for a place that God will lead him to. Not a place that he can see first or understand until he gets there. Then God promises, I will bless you so that you will be a blessing. We know that each one of us is called to be a blessing to others, even though we do not understand what it is that we're doing or where we are headed. That drama between Abraham and God brings us to another mountain drama, the transfiguration of Jesus in our gospel today. Jesus was transfigured before Peter, James, and John. The amazing experience led Peter to say to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. To experience those mountain testing of testing and transfiguration, let us consider the proposal of Peter to Jesus about the three tents. Let us consider converting three tents into a home of a prayer, a home of a trust, and a home of a forgiveness. First, a tent as a home of prayer. Prayer should be the soul of our homes. It connects our hearts to the place where God dwells. It is the, the sacred center of our lives where all is one and where God is with us in a very intimate way. Let us then allow our prayer create a network of intimate relationships that links us with our neighbors and with our loving God. Second, 
attend as a home of trust. Trust is the heart of companionship in our homes. It is the foundation of life. Without trust, suspicion, deception, and hypocrisy become the overpowering gains in our daily lives. Let us allow our trust for each other, create a joyful bridge between us as God's children. Third, as a tent, as a home of forgiveness. Forgiveness is the language of love in our homes. Pope Francis says, forgiving others is first and foremost healing our own hearts from acts of anger, bitterness, and the desire for revenge. Let us allow forgiveness make a difference in our own lives as a reconciled and a reconciling life. Jesus brought Peter, James, and John to the mountain of transfiguration. Today, we bring our families, our friends, our neighbors, and our co-workers into the mountain of the Holy Eucharist. So as we approach this Eucharist and mountain, may it transform us to become families of prayer, may it reform us to become trusted friends, and may it change each one of us to become forgiven neighbors. Then, prayer, trust, and forgiveness become essential instruments in creating a faith that is generous and given. Finally, in the moments of darkness and confusion, if we listen in the silence of our hearts, it is there, the loving touch of the hand of Jesus on our frightened shoulders, telling us not to be afraid. And the voice of God whispering in our hearts that we are his beloved son or daughter in whom he is well pleased.